most rhythm games are known to have that one song in the past that was notorious for its difficulty and remains iconic today. DDR has Max 300, Osu has The Big Black, Step Mania has Death Piano, and etc. These songs at the time pushed the bar for how hard a song can become in a rhythm game and serve the purpose of testing even the most skilled players. Throughout the years, skilled players of their respective games began to push the limits of how well they can score on these songs. Max 300 has been AAA'd by tons of players nowadays, and Chris Trike was just recently able to get the first ever Marvelous Full Combo on it. The Big Black has been dominated by a couple of players as well, Riruchi and Idki managing to double S it, and some other players getting insane scores on it via Hidden, Hard Rock, or even Bolt at the same time. The point illustrated here is that despite how hard the creators made these songs, players were able to develop past these difficulty barriers the creators originally formed for them. Most people have already seen the footage of these iconic scores, but they don't necessarily know the story of how they got there. We're going to be talking about the score progression of a different song that you should all be familiar with. A song that everyone asked their one friend who was really good at the game to play to see how good they really were. This is a score progression of Guitar Hero 3's Through the Fire and Flames expert chart. The expert chart for Through the Fire and Flames saw its debut on August 2nd, 2007. It was a two minute preview of the first minute or so of the song, and then the outro. The video then linked to a thread on Score Hero, as the video was Score Hero exclusive. Score Hero is a site for documenting scores and general Guitar Hero slash rock band discussion. This thread was dedicated to the discussion of the chart, and it was evident that people were very interested. No one had ever seen a chart like this in a Guitar Hero game, and the Score Hero community was at the edge of their seat, waiting for the game to be released. There is actually something interesting to note about the older version of this chart. The notes were the same, but the differences mainly revolved around the hammer-ons and pull-offs and the strumming. In the chart shown from August, the Rampaging Dragon section actually has no hammer-on or pull-offs between the strumming, meaning you had to strum between every note. This also transferred to other parts of the song, and these changes weren't implemented until the game's release. Before we talk about scores, we should probably break down what makes Through the Fire Flame so hard to score on to begin with. The first section that makes score optimization challenging is Bridge 1. Bridge 1 starts off extremely technical, with its barrage of grace notes that are very tricky to time. This leads into a few more grace notes that then transition into a 20 notes per second blue-orange trill that then goes into a green-red-yellow zigzag. Lastly, after FCing the rest of Bridge 1, you're faced with an insanely fast anchor pattern that took quite a while for people to find a viable, consistent tapping method. Solo Fill 2 is the next hard section, but it's a lot different than Bridge 1. The main challenge with Solo Fill 2 was that the hammer-ons were constantly changing speeds, which came with some awkwardly timed strumming as well. Players are often caught off guard by this section, as it's definitely one of the more muscle memory oriented ones due to the nature of the constantly changing speeds. The end of climatic buildup has a green, yellow, orange zigzag that is in between these ascending and descending chords. This section is more or less meant to give you a preview of what is about to come, which then leads us into Herman's solo. The solo is relatively challenging, but there's one part that really stands out. There are orange anchors that have these areas where you have to either transition back to your strumming hand to strum, or be forced to perform the entire section one-handed if you weren't quick enough to tap it. Both of these methods are extremely tricky to do, and it usually ends up boiling down to preference given what the player's strengths are. The ending of Herman Solo 2 into Wata is easily one of the hardest sections to hit, if not the hardest by some. There are seven grace note strums you have to strum precisely, which leads right into a brutal tapping section with some tricky strums to top it all off. After a very short break, Twin Solo is there to shake things up one more time before the solo ends. 200 BPM strumming leads into ascending triplets, then back to more time strums is just one of the chokeable sections in this very quick amount of time. Make sure you can do descending triplets too, because those are right around the corner as soon as you're done hitting the ascending ones. So Far Away 3 used to be the most confusing section to hit due to the speed of it, but nowadays players can FC it as fast as 300% speed due to new tapping methods being found throughout the years. This section was called the Red Snake. This monster of a zigzag pattern was 26.6 notes per second, the fastest section of the song, and it wasn't for a few months before Warlord was able to FC it just once. This section was really crucial, as it had a star power phrase that people could use to score higher on it. Lastly, you're met with the outro. This section also has a grace note transition right before the tapping part. This one is not as drastic and might not look that daunting at face value, but you have to think about what you have done to get to that section. Whether you are passing or FCing it, this was a section that had you a nervous wreck if you were on any kind of personal best pace. Other than that, yeah, this song's pretty easy.
The game saw its release on October 28th, 2007, and people were ready to test their skills on this seven minute gauntlet of a chart. Within all these Guitar Hero enthusiasts who were determined to score as well as they possibly could, there were a couple standout players who seemed to take off from the rest of them immediately, Hell Ashes and I Am Chris For Life. Just within 24 hours of the game being released, Chris Trek had already obtained a 95% on the song. Then, just a few days later, he had posted a score nearing the 750k barrier, clocking in at 747,000. People were already noticing that Chris had something figured out about this song already, and people were demanding video footage. Chris updated the thread again with him finally breaking the 750,000 point barrier, but something happened. He ran into a very unfortunate hardware issue that would prevent him from playing for a bit. He stated that while he was playing, his Xbox spontaneously started acting up, and that he was unable to not just play Guitar Hero, but any games on his Xbox at all. It wouldn't be for another month until he was able to get back into it, and grinding for more scores again. Luckily, it wasn't long until Chris was back at it, but there was another player that had an interest in this score hunting game, and that would be Hell Ashes. Hell Ashes was known as one of the best Guitar Hero players at the time, most notably known for his insane scores on Jordan back in the Guitar Hero 2 days. So it was no surprise that he was ready to take this song on as well. On November 13th, 2007, Hell Ashes had posted two scores in the same day, a 788,000 score and a 795k score, just a half hour apart from each other. Just a day after Hell Ashes scores, Chris had returned with the score of 773k, about 20k behind Hell Ash's current record on the song. People were beginning to predict that a rivalry was underway. Sadly, this wasn't the case, as the only other score Hell Ashes seemed to post on Score Hero was an 841,000 point score five months later. Since Hell Ashes wasn't in the picture anymore and was focusing on FCing Jordan, it was Chris's turn again to display to see what he can do with the song. However, people thought this improvement journey would only go so far, as quite a few people either thought a full combo was impossible, or would take quite some time to do. Right after the brief Chris Trike vs Hell Ashes rivalry, there began to be a lot of brainstorming determining whether or not Through the Fire and Flames was able to be full comboed. The majority thought it was simply not doable, stating that there were sections of the song that are not consistently possible to perform, or not at all in some cases. Others did think that it was not viable for the most part, but there was a slight chance a full combo was in the future. However, these people guesses were as long as 10 years, which would just be shy of a year from now. Chris wasn't really concerned with what anyone thought was possible or impossible though. He was simply doing his own thing, and there wasn't a thread deeming if it was possible or not that was going to sway him from continuing further. On November 18th, 2007, Chris Trike became the first person to break the legendary 800,000 point barrier, with a score of 802,625 points. This was the score that really put Chris on the map, and now people were more interested than ever to see what he can do. Chris still hasn't posted a video yet, as his usual method of updating his scores was by him constantly bumping his thread with new screenshots every few days, and the only way of seeing previous scores was by seeing if anyone reiterated it or not in the thread. Some more score improvements and a video camera later, on December 9th, 2007, we got to see the first ever video of Chris Trike playing through the fire and flames. While not his personal best of 838,000, Chris Trike was able to upload 8 minutes of some of the best Guitar Hero footage anyone had ever seen. A recorded run of 818,366 points on Through the Fire and Flames 
with an opening note streak of 1,084 notes. This simply blew the Score Hero community away. Players were able to gauge how hard obtaining a score like this was through his screenshots, but just seeing it in video form baffled everyone. Now that Chris had access to a camera and was back at it again, it was really time for him to show the world what he was capable of. Now that we're beginning to approach the scores above 900k, Chris knew that he had to document his scores on video more than ever if he was able to. Before, he stated that he was only going to videotape his scores if he felt like he was on the verge of a good score, but now that he is inching closer and closer to the FC, it seems like he doesn't want to take any chances. He began to livestream on Ustream.tv his runs, and he had the Score Hero community right behind him the whole way. Luckily, some people were actually able to record some of his best attempts through screen capturing Chris's Ustream broadcast. On March 17, 2008, Chris had gotten 916,000 points. Then on April 8, 2008, he had just been shy of a 99% but still managed to get a personal best of 926,049 points. There were still a few sections that he was consistently struggling with though that I mentioned before that made this FC very hard to put together. He missed in both of the hard sections in Bridge 1, had an unfortunate miss in Sam Solo, missed right at the end of What The, missed both hard sections of Twin Solo, and lastly missed the Red Snake Star Power phrase in So Far Away 3. Every section seemed pretty viable to fix, but it wasn't going to be easy for Chris. There were methods for these sections available, but they weren't necessarily as clear and concise as they are nowadays, so you had to take it at what it was, or players would simply come up with their own methods. A few more score improvements later, and Chris realized that he really had a chance at pulling this off. However, Bridge 1 seemed to be giving Chris a run for his money. Chris managed to become more consistent on other sections down the road, and yet again rapidly kept improving his score plenty of more times. On April 17, 2008, he had gotten a score of 966k points. There is no video of this sadly, but luckily a user by the name of Leprosy916 was able to describe where Chris's mistakes lied. He missed in the first hard part of Bridge 1, another random spot in Sam Solo, the Grace Notes before What The, and lastly, a miss in the middle of Twin Solo. It seemed like Chris had the majority of the hard parts down, but his consistency was becoming fuzzy in other places of the song. After his last score of 975k, he took a break and went to Guitar Hero 2 for a while to dominate the game there. After taking plenty of first places that still hold to be impressive 11 years later, Chris had announced on his thread that he was streaming again on May 26, 2008. Chris's break from Guitar Hero 3 seemed like it helped him if anything. A few days later, according to people on the thread watching his stream, he was able to get the first ever 3000 note streak on the song, missing just right before the break in Twin Solo. The score came out to be 951k, and while not a personal best, this was the type of confidence boost Chris needed to push the note streak just a bit further. Another thing to note is that people began to realize that Chris was becoming very consistent at Bridge 1, a section Chris struggled with for the longest time as there wasn't a consistent method out that made the section easy at all. A couple more days of grinding, and on June 1st, 2008, people were now 100% certain that the FC was right around the corner now.
Chris had managed to get a minus 3, a drastic improvement from his minus 10 personal best. The most impressive part about this entire run was that he had only missed in one spot, Herman Solo. More specifically, the orange anchors that I mentioned before that had the tricky to time strumming with it. That was the only spot he missed in. The thing about FCs though, is that a minus 3 can take forever to improve on at times, especially with the song as long as through the fire and flames. An FC requires a different type of mentality when the stakes are as high as they were for Chris. Rhythm gaming history was just 3 mere notes away, and it was in a section that he has hit plenty of times. There were two questions that needed to be answered with a score like this. Was someone eventually going to catch up to Chris and steal the spotlight? Or was he going to adjust quick enough to perform the most iconic full combo in Guitar Hero history? Everyone was at the edge of their seats, as Chris wasn't streaming so no one was able to tell when he was going to pull it off. Chris had even said himself that he never thought an FC was going to be possible, let alone being the one to do it. Everyone was up no matter how late it was. People were certain that Chris was going to FC it, and people weren't going to miss out the exact moment it happens. On June 4th, 2008, 4.05am server time, a user by the name of FootballTom3685 had noted that Chris had a score on the Xbox leaderboards with a score of 987,786 points. He wasn't streaming so no one had video evidence at the hour it was done. People began to calculate if a score like this was even possible with a miss, or perhaps it could have been an overstrum near the end of the song. The suspense was immense, and people were flooding the thread awaiting for some kind of evidence that it might have been all over. On June 4th, 2008, at 4.36am server time, Chris Trike had posted the screenshot that the Guitar Hero community had been waiting for. Through the Fire and Flames had been FC'd. All 3,722 notes hit, and onto the results screen where the 100% was shown for the world to see. After the game's release, people said that a full combo would require years of practice or that it was simply never going to be possible. Chris managed to defy the odds and FC'd the 7 minute gauntlet just 7 months after he had began his attempts on it, along with two breaks where he took multiple weeks off to either relax or to dominate Guitar Hero 2. Just over a year ago before the FC, Chris had just discovered what hammer-ons and pull-offs were. Even though he was behind the curve at first, his sheer talent and dedication was shown in the 7 month period he dominated the song, while simultaneously doing the same for other Guitar Hero songs along the way. At 6.27am server time, the video was finally uploaded after 2 hours of sheer anticipation. There were dozens of people who posted at the exact same time the video was up, as Chris had become an overnight sensation and inspired multiple other players to follow in Chris's footsteps. Guitar Hero Phenom, Sean Superstar, just a couple of players months later that managed to FC the song as well. The highest score on the song currently is by Yukog Monkey in 2014, who was able to obtain the most optimized score on the song to this day, totaling 990,518 points. Some of you are probably wondering, what else can be said about this song? It's already been FC'd. Let's just say that years later, Through the Fire and Flames wasn't a 7 minute song anymore, and that we're just getting started. No way. No fucking way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. For the next year or two, it was now other players' turns to pull off the legendary FC. For most people, it was their ultimate goal with the game, as they had no other reason to play the song after that, other than to utilize better star power to improve their score. A few others, however, had something different in mind, as it wouldn't be too much longer until we saw people speeding up the song on the PC version of Guitar Hero 3 through a method known as speed hacking. Speed hacking allows for songs to be sped up from their original speed to whatever speed they desire via an alternate program. G Gamerman, who holds the second highest score on Through the Fire and Flames, used this tool to obtain a 125% score on the song on July 10th, 2010. His first documented score on it would be just above the 900k mark already, with a 97%. G Gamerman would go on to improve his score a couple more times throughout the year, and manage to close the gap quite nicely. 
On January 23rd, 2011, G Gamer Man would bring the note count to just 15 notes away from being FC'd, and he would cap off his Through the Fire and Flame score so the 110% FC'd not long after. <laughs> Minus 15. I missed in bridge one. What the? And the red snake means I missed almost there. Yeah! 110% speed FC! Through the Fire and Flames would eventually enter a drought in terms of pushing the limits of the song. Custom songs were becoming more popular, different rhythm games were coming out, which led to a fairly fast decline in the interest of the song overall. However, one player managed to come back a couple of years later, and it eventually became no surprise that he was going to be the one to pull it off. Ukog Monkey, also known as George Boothby, showed that he was able to optimize the song on normal speed in 2014 with his first place score in it that still remains to this day. About a year later, he decided to go out on a whim and take it a step further. In a stream on July 23rd, 2015, he uploaded a highlight of him nearly getting a 3,000 note streak on 125% speed. He seemed to falter near the end of the song as well, meaning that this wasn't just a matter of technicality, but stamina now played a factor too. It now required much more physical strength to hit multiple parts of the song. Combine that with nerves, this spontaneous score he got on stream set for a brand new journey that George might not have initially expected to get himself into. Jesus! Holy fuck, man, that note streak! When I got into what the, I shat my pants. Oh, as if I missed coming out of what the. This video didn't really get a ton of attention behind it, as people probably just dismissed it as a really solid score and not something George was going to set himself out to FC. However, a month later, he showed that he was legitimately training for this, uploading him FCing from Solo Fill 2 and all the way to the outro where he would eventually drop a miss there. Two days later, people were starting to realize that George had a goal in mind, and it was very similar to Chris Chike's mentality with the song. Just constant practice of the same sections over and over again, Full runs of the song, over and over again. After countless runs and chokes on stream, George Boothy had obtained a 100% on Through the Fire and Flames at 125% speed. Except one thing, it wasn't a full combo. In an FC run, it doesn't necessarily mean that you hit every note, but rather you maximize the combo that is possible on that song. George had a heartbreaking overstrum in one of the easiest parts of the song, Herman Solo 2. Despite how visibly annoyed he was, he ended up FCing every other part he normally struggled with and had gone to 100%, but not a full combo. George would eventually go to take a break from Through the Fire and Flames and Guitar Hero 3 in general. With the release of Guitar Hero Live, he wanted to just have fun with a brand new Guitar Hero game and see what he could do with that. A few months later on April 13th, 2016, George was back at it, and he uploaded a very peculiar FC. It was an FC on Through the Fire and Flames, but it was with the Big Notes mod. While unexpected, it shed quite a bit of light on the song again, and maybe he was going to give it another shot at 125% now that he's back at Guitar Hero 3. After multiple chokes in the past, George had managed to pull it together and become the first person to FC the song on 125% speed on April 19th, 2016. Oh my god. Oh. 
it happened. It fucking happened. It's over. After the FC, George still had one last idea with the song that would catch the community off guard. He already FC'd the song with the Big Notes mod, why not do it with notes that are just a bit smaller? And as in a bit, I mean one pixel. That's right, a single pixel. That means in some cases, you wouldn't even be able to see the notes if they were directly on the measure lines at all. This made the run a mix of visual focus, phenomenal muscle memory, and not a lot of blinking unless you were that confident in the section you were playing. This would be the last unique FC George would get on the song, which would be on May 13th, 2016. That's it. I'm done. Best thing I've ever done. I've done it again. I've done it again. I've done it again. How does this keep happening, guys? How? I don't... <laughs> and that concludes the reign of George Boothby. George had practically covered so many of the gimmicks by modifying the notes and became the first ever person to FC it on 125% speed as well, showing that his score optimization skills weren't the only thing he had to show on the song. After George's FC, Asai became the second person to FC the song on 125% on November 1st, 2016, and Darkly would be next in line on December 1st, 2016. Darkly's and Asai's runs were relatively low-key, as they had garnered nowhere near as much traction as George's run would. Darkly decided that maybe the song needs to be FC just a tad faster. He sped up the 125% version of the chart by 10% and managed to FC that not even a month and a half later from his 125% FC on January 16th, 2017. With that, Darkly now had the fastest existing FC of the song on 137.5% speed. While not the most traditional speed to FC a song on, it was substantially faster than what the previous FCs were done on, and this was now where the bar was set. It now seemed like this was as fast as people were going to bother to FC now. Most people thought the most reasonable speed to FC it on now was 150%, and not many players were interested in such a daunting feat. Some players had this goal in mind, however but one of them stood out from the rest and went above and beyond with this chart in more ways than one. This is the story of Randy Ladyman. Now that we have gone over what speed hacking is and the gimmicks that were introduced with the song, we are now met with a player who managed to push all these boundaries in such a short amount of time. Randy Ladyman is another player who still reigns at the top of the leaderboards of Through the Fire and Flames setting himself at third place as of today. His earliest score on the song on his channel is actually a 150% run on May 2nd, 2016, with a score of 839,257 points. Then, a few months later, he would revisit the song again in his stream, improving his score by nearly 90,000 points and had a 98% score on it now. Like George's situation, he came back to this every once in a while, but this wasn't anything that he was going to spend day after day on it at the time. Oh yeah, it would have been 9.30 if I didn't miss it almost there, but Jesus, that's 99%, I could guarantee to you. Nope, <laughs> not 99%. Randy would then keep rapidly improving as a player, uploading FC after FC that would surprise himself each score he got. It would be some time before we saw another run from him again on 150%, and his next score would be another solid improvement, a minus 29 with a score of 939,204 points. This record would actually end up being short-lived, because Darkly would come out of nowhere with an insane score of 964,110 points and miss in very few sections of this run. The Trill transition in Bridge 1, messed up the strumming after the triplets and twin solo, and lastly missed in the grace notes on Almost There. The most impressive part about this run is that he managed to hit the hardest part of the song in this run on 150%, the grace notes before what the, and we'll get into why it's the hardest section in a bit. Sadly, Darkly would note in his description that he simply had no desire to pursue an FC on this song, but he did note that it was now doable, and the footage definitely shows it. Let's go!
I obliterated <laughs> Get obliterated, Randy, let's go! Randy eventually gave in to doing more attempts of improving his score again, and decided to test how close he can get to FCing it. On July 17th, 2017, he uploaded a minus 7 run, a 22 note improvement from his last documented run. This specific run of his was very odd compared to most of the closer FCs on this song. He fell behind on the strumming of Flying Free, missed in Solo Fill 1, missed the Grace Notes in What The, missed in the Break of Twin Solo, and FC just about everything else. While this sounds like a lot, but really this was more or less great news, as he had now shown that he was capable of FCing most of the hard sections, and that now was maybe the time to close the gap and iron out the rest of the minor mistakes he made. However, Randy decided to throw us the biggest curveball imaginable, and decided that he had other plans. As a matter of fact, he would throw us two curveballs. Remember how I talked about Yukon Monkey's idea to FC through the fire and flames with notes the size of a pixel? That's exactly what Randy did, except he combined George's 125% FC with his near invisible notes FC to get what Randy considered to be his best score ever. I'm fucking done, dude. I am fucking done. I am so fucking done. <laughs> what? Oh. Huh? What? That did not just fucking happen. After this video, people began to wonder why Randy didn't just go for a blindfolded run at this point. A person by the name of Justin Elzig had a run posted two years ago of him, getting a 99%, so this already showed potential for it, but like any other FC, those few extra notes are what stop everyone in their tracks. Do I have a shirt that I could cover my face with real quick, so I could do a performance mode run? A, a, essentially a performance mode run? I have a beanie somewhere, I don't know where it went though. Okay? Okay. I cannot see shit. Randy would eventually attempt a blindfolded run, as he randomly decided to try it after looking around for a beanie he had lying around in his room on stream. On his first try on November 17th, 2017, he got a 98%, missing 50 notes. This run showed that he had had the song memorized pretty well already. With a blindfolded run, however, the only things to guide you are the song itself and your own muscle memory. So these were skills Randy was going to have to develop as he was learning. Damn it! Ah, that fucked up a lot of potential points, potential percent as well. Wow. Okay, whoa, 929. Holy shit. God. Okay. A few months later, he came back and started to do full runs again and would set himself out to bring the note countdown. On January 15th, 2018, Randy had cut down from 50 notes to just three notes left in the song, which were all in three different spots. The Grace Notes in Bridge 1, Solo Fill 2, and the transition at the end of You Rock. Although he had missed in three different spots, this definitely did not rule out the possibility of him getting it, as he did not think he was even able to full combo it until this run. 76? Oh my- minus 3! What? There was no turning back at this point for Randy. This FC would write another insane chapter in the Through the Fire and Flames history books and would be one of the most iconic FCs across all Guitar Hero games, period. Multiple chokes caused him to miss past the 2000 note mark and even had a miss as far as Twin Solo. Randy didn't give up in the slightest, because on January 20th, 2018, he made the front page of Reddit and Guitar Hero history that same day. Ah, oh. oh, fuck! I thought I was on an FC. Motherfucker. Fuck. Fuck. God damn it. Ah. Oh, I'm a fucking dick muncher. God damn it. What? Am I on an FC? Oh! Woo! 
Hell yeah! Yes. Oh my god! Holy shit! Through the Fire and Flames had went from being FC'd to being FC'd without even looking at the notes. Just pure memorization and phenomenal muscle memory had allowed Randy to do something not a single person would have thought was possible at one point. Randy had solidified himself as the king of this song, and now at this point he had one final goal, to FC it at the legendary 150% speed. Before he went for attempts on that again, he took a break from the song in general and focused on other FCs. Randy would come back to the 150% FC grind with a teaser video on July 18, 2018. The first clip was of him FCing past Bridge 1, while the next clip gave a much stronger glimmer of hope, an FC from Herman Solo to the outro. Then, on August 3rd, 2018, he managed to FC the entire solo six times in a row. What made him able to FC everything so consistently now? One of Randy's most missed sections in his 150% runs would be the grace notes before what the that I've mentioned multiple times throughout this video. Normally a player would downstrum all of the strum notes before transitioning to the tapping section. But since this is 150, Randy had to take a different approach. There are seven strums you have to precisely time and then anchor the very next note right after strumming it in multiple quick successions in order to combo these types of notes. Down strumming allows a player to facilitate their timing better as compared to alt strumming since they have more control over it. However, the strums were too fast to down strum all seven of them, so Randy had to come up with a different solution that would prevent him from falling behind or not being able to transition into the tapping section properly. On the first clip I showed, he came up with a new technique that he would downstrum the first three notes, upstrum the next one, and then downstrum the last three. This allowed him to hit the grace notes much more fluent than before, and within a few weeks, he was able to optimize this technique to the point where this was becoming a relatively consistent section now. Now that we've analyzed the part that was originally giving Randy trouble, and how he was able to overcome it, his journey to FCing the song would be much more challenging as Randy would face heartbreak unlike any other grind with the song he has had in the past. Just three days after his announcement on July 18th, 2018, he would get a minus two run in where he messed up the strumming transition in Twin Solo. A few days later, and he missed right after the grace notes in the outro. Lastly, he would have another run in the outro the very next day, and he went as far as to miss in the last 20 notes of the song. Randy was not giving up though, as he had been relentlessly practicing the solo to assure that he would be comfortable enough to FC the song after such a strenuous section. 300 BPM strumming, multiple 30 plus notes per second sections, absurdly hard time strumming, and nothing but sheer dedication has led Randy to finally write the last chapter that is now a 150% FC of Through the Fire and Flames expert chart. Oh, come on. Wow. Okay. What the fuck? Oh my god! First fucking try! Oh my god! Holy shit, man! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy Not crap! As clips of Dover. Boy! Even after a decade, Guitar Hero 3's Through the Fire and Flames expert chart remains the most iconic chart in Guitar Hero and its history is nothing short of fascinating when you look at how far players took the song to its absolute physical and mental limits. In 2007, some people thought an FC of the song would not have been possible until last year. If you tried telling people the types of scores done now were even remotely possible at one point, no one would have believed you for a second. This song managed to bring together so many people, and the support was always overwhelming for anyone who wanted to take the song to the next level. It's a mystery what anyone has in store next to achieve on this song. Will Randy FC have blindfolded on 125% speed? Will Darkly come back and display his skills once again on the song? Or will someone else come out of the woodwork with a completely new idea that will shock the community once again? It's only a matter of time at this point. 
but for now, we should cherish what this song has done for the game, and appreciate what the players have done to get it to where it is now. Thank you all so much for watching. I can't describe how much fun I had making this video, and I certainly plan on making more Guitar Hero and Clone Hero videos in the future. I would greatly appreciate if you can all check out my Patreon page, as most of what I upload on YouTube immediately gets copyright claimed since I am a rhythm game oriented channel, so your support on there would mean the world to me to continue making content like this. Be sure to check out my sellout links in the description, I'll see you in whatever video I upload next, and take care.